Hi there, and welcome to Motorcycle Live here at the NEC in the UK. Uh, as you can see, I am at the BSA stand where they are launching the new Gold Star. So I did put a very brief video up about this the other morning when the release went out, but I'm actually here on the stand now and it's nice and quiet before they open the doors for proper. So I'll give you a quick look around the bike. So here you go. So this is the one in the red and white, which I just think looks stunning. It really does. And just to finish on that, I know some people have made some comments about how the quality is going to be, but actually that looks, that looks pretty good to me. Oh, I had wondered what this was uh, from, the, from the press shots. I thought maybe it was a hydraulic clutch, but that's actually a, a USB socket. But yeah, give you another look over the rest of the bike. And yeah, the quality of the finish looks pretty good. I did wonder about those rear shocks, whether those would look a little bit uh, basic when I got here, but no, those seem to be quite nice. Even that back end uh, with this sort of Lucas style rear light and those indicators uh, looks small enough. That looks quite nice, that really does. And even on this one with the red and white paint job, it still has all this lovely chrome all over the bike. Now, a few people have commented about just how big that radiator is at the front. And actually, it, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it, when you look at it from the side, it's actually quite low, prof, low profile up against the bike. And if you come around the front, which I shall, it is pretty much in line. I think on some of the, you know, the shots, it was sticking out a bit, but from the front, you can barely see it there. And if I come around, hopefully you can see that a little bit better. So yeah, it, it definitely doesn't have uh, the openness of the air-cooled version, but I think that looks all right. So this is the one uh, that's in the black paint job, which again, I actually quite like, quite similar to the, to the red, but instead it's got this silver, this silver stripe over the tank. So this particular one is the silver sheen paint job. This is the, the silver, no, no, no tank stripe on this one, uh, but yeah. Oh, and chrome mud guards both at the back uh, and at the front, whereas all the other colorways uh, have the, the same color as the tank. So this one is the Highland Green. I wasn't sure what this would be like, whether it would be more of a sort of a racing green, but that's almost a very dark, almost, almost turquoise. It really is a lovely paint job, which I'm sure this camera won't pick up. And last of all, this is the Highland Silver. So this looks a bit like the black one, except with an inverted paint job with a black stripe on the tank. Uh, this one's actually got some leather saddlebags fitted to it which are Frank Thomas, not BSA, but they do look, well, fairly practical, really. Um, I'm guessing the target market for this bike isn't as a big cruiser for crossing continents, uh, and those panniers certainly wouldn't let you do that, but nevertheless, uh, at least it does have some practicality that goes with it. So what this does mean when it's quiet like this is I can actually have a proper, a proper sit on the bike. And actually, I don't know, that is just a really comfortable place to be, it really is. Um, the bars are quite high. Uh, sometimes when I get on a bike, I feel like the bars are almost down too low. Uh, but these are, they're actually cantered back quite a long way, but I do feel as if, um, even if they went up a bit further, that really is just a very, very comfortable riding position. The tank is quite, quite narrow. I mean, this is on a stand, I can easily flat foot it, but I am quite tall. Seating position is fine, loads and loads of legroom maybe even have a high seat or something like that if it came to it but yeah oh uh, and now from here and i'll show you this when i pick the camera up again is that we've got the two clocks there and then the third one is kind of underneath that little screen at the front so as you can see uh, here are those rare replica clocks they're not really reverse sweep as someone corrected me the other day they sweep the right way just from the top down rather than uh, rather than backwards and if you just look that third one in the middle there uh, that's going to be the LCD display for all the other information. It's not illuminated on these bikes, uh, but I'm sure pictures of that will come out in due course. And just while I'm here, uh, there are a few other old BSAs that have been loaned from the Motorcycle Museum that's not far from here. This is a 1937 BSA M23 Empire Star. And here we have the popular round tank from way back in 1925. Uh, yes, it does look a bit like a petrol bicycle. And if you want to see what, what it used to look like, this is the 1963 model DBD34 BSA Gold Star. It's a 500cc air-cooled, no big radiator stuck at the front of that. So I'm guessing that the people who have commented that they're not a big fan of the, 
how the radiator looks. I guess that's what you're used to seeing when you think of a Gold Star. And uh, yeah, the new one isn't like that. It isn't, but I still think it's gonna find its place. And uh, you can't please all the people all of the time. So that's it, that's my very quick look around the BSA stand here. This isn't a bike review, this is just looking at the bikes, getting up close and seeing them in person for the first time. Uh, I think they're really nice. I know that opinion might be divided, especially by those uh, who you know remember the old days. But remember the old company isn't around anymore and I think it's just great to see BSA back as a brand. Can't wait to ride one and who knows, one day one might find its way into my garage. Thanks for watching.